WandaVision, everyone. It finally premiered. We've got three episodes for now. What did you guys think? First episode kind of was a little slow at first, but I, I think that was kind of intentional. Mm-hmm. To kind of lull you into a false sense of security a little bit. Sure. Um, I think that uh, each subsequent episode so far has been like, you know, it's one of those shows you really have to pay attention to. It's There's a lot of little Easter eggs thrown in there. Um, the commercials they do, like, they're, <laughs> they're really subtle. Yes. But, you know, if you're not like a, if you haven't been like following the MCU since, you know, Iron Man. Yes. Yeah. Much, it's, you're going to miss out on stuff. So it pays to have a little bit of background going into it. But I think the further they get into it, the more intriguing i'm finding it yes yeah i'm hoping there's it's, a big payoff a i'm sure there is start, though. yeah which i'm okay with because it's a show it's building up something you know i know a lot of people weren't fans of the at least the first two episodes but i just i know it's something's going on it's bigger than this this is kind of like an illusion i do like how you know it does uh, a good job at making it like a classic uh, classic 50s sitcom right like the song the premise is very bewitched like it, it like it's like something that could actually exist back in the 50s if you will if they thought of it you know uh you know yeah. she's married to a robot <laughs> but yeah like throwing those easter eggs in there and slight hints like there's a tone shift right when they have the couple over for dinner each episode is a different sitcom i don't know if you know yes that. so yep. like the first mm-hmm. one was bewitched Fif- yeah. so, or no the first one was uh, the dick van dyke show then the second one was Bewitched, and I, I can't remember what this next... I haven't seen the third one, I apologize. It's just but... more 70s. So I okay, think so... I think they went 50s, 60s, 70s, I think, with their... Um... And and at one point, they will go Roseanne, I know. Um, yeah, 80s. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it's coming it's, up. It's, it, it's interesting in how they do that, um, but what's what I find more intriguing is not so much the episode itself, it's like after the episode. Something happens, like mm-hmm. the last the last bit of the second episode when she goes no and then everything rewinds that's going to tell us a lot more than the entire episode episode itself. two you're talking about yeah, right? i was totally yeah. confused by that yeah. but yeah <laughs> this is somehow going to tie into ant-man and um the quantum realm i have a feeling because yes remember loki goes into the quantum realm and then that's how they're able to time travel yes so something's going to tie this together that way because you have Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, I believe, happening. Right. She's going to be in it, yeah. Scarlet Witch. So this sets, I think this is going to set up the next phase in a, a big way. And yeah. that's another reason why I, I forgive any of it lacking, I guess. Like, honestly, I'm entertained by what I'm watching. I just, I think it's very, um, very artsy, you know, what they're doing, you know, retro. But same time, like there's a bigger story happening. It's all for a reason. Let's say I, I hope so anyway, yes. right? Um, People need to be patient. They need to yes. uh, like yeah. You remember how we all groaned and moaned when we didn't see Daredevil's costume until like the last episode? Yeah, yeah. that's what this is doing. Which we fell more in it's love, a... I think, with the black costume, which is funny. It's just a simple <laughs> dread pirate right. costume like thing. Well, and... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of like if we. Um... I don't know, I kind of look at it like, you know, Spider-Man had his, like, homemade costume when Tony Stark found him. Right. I think if we would have went through an entire movie of of that and then finally got the iconic, you Mm -hmm. know, red and blue suit, we would have been a little more impressed. You know, it would have been like, oh, hey, this is, your patience has been rewarded. So I think it's kind of the same thing with this. Right. Yeah, Um, exactly. the, The show itself is a very slow burn. It's a lot to cram into... 30 minutes but i almost think that that's like the perfect amount of time for it yeah yeah because i think if it went beyond that i'd just get bored it's like it's like a sitcom time frame you know yeah 30 minutes i I like what they're doing i and a lot of people are like god this is so slow i like it because it is entertaining i mean the shows the the episodes are funny but what's fun is now the little nest eggs that they throw into each episode giving you a bigger picture trying to solve the riddle you know, yeah, mm-hmm. like the advertisements, you got Stark Industries with the toaster. And I did watch a clip on that because I didn't pick it up myself. But the toaster basically is vision. It has, you know, like eyes and then a light on the forehead of it, sort of like if you oh, go no, back yeah. and yeah, just little 
thankfully, that's what YouTube's great with is a lot of other people do the work for you. So you just watch the videos and then you're like, oh my God, I didn't pick up on that. Yeah, they got like Hydra Soak. That's like a, a bath powder, I believe. Um, sword. Yes. There's sword agents. That that symbol we're seeing, it's a, I think it's an upside down sword or maybe yeah. vice versa. That is a sentient world observation and response department. That's what it, a sword means. And they deal with extraterrestrial threats. So they're a space-based counterpart to S.H.I.E.L.D. I almost wondered if that's what they were going towards with, like, Nick Fury being in space. Yeah, that could tie into that. You know, right. Because, like, now S.H.I.E.L.D.'s dead, you mm -hmm. know? So it's kind of like they need something else. And now after, you know, Thanos arrived on Earth and snapped his fingers and yeah. all that stuff, it's like, well, the threats are even bigger than we thought. So the idea, and I think a lot of us, I think a lot of us think the same thing. Maybe this is all made from Wanda. She, her mm -hmm. psyche pretty much possibly couldn't handle the loss of vision, you know, because she had five years off, but she, they were all, they just disappeared, you know, from the blip. They didn't live those five years. So she's now accepting, well, not probably not accepting vision's death after the events in infinity war. So yeah, I think she created this universe in a way, but maybe with some assistance, maybe it's made to bury her power abilities. Cause it's harming things. I'm not sure, but yeah, there's, I think that's kind of the gist of it. This is a fictional world and all the people in it are like agents of sword, sword or something else. Possibly. Now I understand. Really yeah. Why didn't you tell me that earlier? When I was like, I'm confused. I don't understand what's going on. What war were they? I was just and saving it for the show. <laughs> well, to backtrack a little bit, Megan, you you weren't too impressed with the show, right? But it's because no, you you I, don't know the characters. Right. I didn't understand what was going on. Right. So I've like, seen the movies, but I mean, yeah. I don't. I don't think I follow it to the extent that you guys do, and so I was very sure. lost. Yeah. Which is interesting, though, because it's nice to get someone's perspective outside of knowing the characters, right? Like, could this function on its own? Clearly, with Megan, it didn't. But I could see my mom liking it, you know, if she actually thought it was a sitcom, you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of buildup, and I think that's what's happening. There's, there's a rumored... It might actually be true. There's a deleted scene, I think, in Endgame, maybe, that sets up WandaVision. And, of course, it's never been shown, but I... I think she breaks into wherever Vision's body is being stored and she attempts to to bring him back, possibly. And maybe this reality is created to kind of, I don't know, yeah. make it happen. I'm not sure. Like Vision, it's funny how they, they function normally until they're like asked simple questions like, where'd you guys move from? You know, that's when that, that tonal shift happened, right? And yeah. And then the, the dude choked, and then she breaks and says, Vision, help him. I like those moments. Like the second episode, I believe, the, the lady breaks the glass. And it's in black and white still, but you see the red blood. And then on the intercom, you've got, you've got the agent from Ant-Man and the Wasp. I forgot his name, but he, he's in the show later on. He's breaking through that intercom saying, Wanda, uh, who did this to, this to you? Yeah, yeah, who's doing this to you? So, yeah, there's a lot think, of setup. I think there's a good payoff. I, I, I'm i hoping anyway. But I will say it's refreshing to see Marvel extremist bitch about the show. <laughs> you know? Well, and, and the thing you have to look at, too, is like every episode deals with a part of Wanda's past that she's maybe trying yes. to reconcile. Right. Um, you know, episode two, you get the, the watch that says Strucker, who's the guy who made her, basically. Right. Out of the um, um, the what stone were they made from? I'm sorry, I the mind the yes. mind stone, right? Loki scepter, or whatever. her and her brother. Um, yep. And then episode three, it's like, what about your brother Pietro? That's like, yes. Okay, what? that was a tone <laughs> shift. Yeah, what'd you say? <laughs> um, but I get um, I get Pleasantville vibes yes, out of this show for sure, which I really like. It's like. You know, it's you've got this pristine black and white facade of like the perfect American family, and then like something breaks, and then it like catches your attention, and then mm -hmm. everyone just kind of pretends it didn't happen. Right. 
Yeah, and I don't know the actress's name, but the first episode, that's the mom from that 70s show. She's a very good actress. Yeah. Um, and God, I can't think of her name. I can't either, but she's she's very good comedic actress. And yeah. it's, it's really jarring to see her break tone, right? She's like, you know, because she's telling her husband to stop it. He's cho- clearly choking, and she's... Um, She's like, you know, just casually stop it, stop. And then she gets serious about it, but she's still smiling. It's creepy. It just has that cool little touch to it. And I I really um, uh, applaud Disney for trying this out, right? Because it's it's kind of dark, some of it, you know. And there is theories that Wanda made that dude choke, maybe because he was pressing them uh, about their past, which... Yeah, they're all kind of like in a a daze, if you will. Like, it it doesn't seem like she knows what's going on, you know? She... It's kind of like her memory was wiped or something. The thing, like, I have a little theory about why sure. it's set up the way it is. Yeah. So Wanda comes from Sokovia, which is kind of like a third world country, kind of. Yep. You know, they don't have, like, the same advantages that America does, maybe. If you go to, like, a third world country that is just kind of catching up with the rest of the world. Exactly. She might have grown up like watching stuff like I Love Lucy and thinking it was like modern television. Right. Yeah. Yep. So that's why she's using this as like a. I think Wanda's doing more of it than anybody else is. Right. Yep. Um, but it's being monitored, or like she's in a coma, like trying to. They're trying to like contain her powers or something like that. My other theory on it is that if you look at the, I kind of went back and researched a little bit of like Scarlet Witch, the character. Yeah. And I think Agnes is supposed to be uh, Catherine Hahn's character. I think she's supposed to be Agatha Harkness. Okay. In the comics. Who is that? And Agatha Harkness is like a, she's like this old witch that was from the Salem witch trials. Ooh. That that helps her develop her whatever hex powers or oh, whatever sure, sure. they're called. Um, so that she doesn't just like flip out and destroy the entire world. Right. And uh, uh, it's interesting. I, I think maybe that's part of it because you're, you know, you're going into like, once this is done, we're going to go into Dr. Strange. We're going to go into mm-hmm. Spider-Man. We're going to go into Shang-Chi. We're going to go into, you know, Ant-Man and the Wasp. And I think it's going to have like, there's going to be something that seems subtle at first, but it's going to have a ripple effect. Right. Can we and, talk about for a minute who Geraldine is? Because I don't know who that and why that whole little conversation happened with with Vision outside and almost like they were warning mm-hmm. him. I, I'm confused. I think she might be like a plant, like kind of put mm-hmm. in there, like an agent, yeah. maybe mm-hmm. like put in there to be like kind of monitor the whole thing. Well, like, so oh, why, maybe would I'll... They, why would they warn him? Maybe they want the simulation to stop. Well, maybe he's the only one that can stop it. Like, he can stop uh, her. I don't know. Yeah. It, like I said, there's so much mystery. I, I'm sure there's a payoff. This had to be crafted, right? I mean, since Disney Plus premiered, this was a show that was teased to us. So I'm sure I'm sure the reveal is going to be fantastic. I, I really uh, have high hopes yeah. for that. I hope so anyway, right? But yeah, there's a lot well, of in- intrigue there and stuff. Well, and even if you look at the Loki trailer. Um, yes. There's Owen Wilson's character in that he like runs a I can't remember what he called it now, but it's like a kind of like a paranormal right. activity kind of yep. group. So maybe they're the ones that are monitoring Wanda. Oh sure, yeah, mm-hmm. it's all connected. I yeah, mean, uh, I love I this. Know. This is like this gives them plenty of room to set up things, and then when you get the movie, you already know they didn't have to make you they didn't have to make all these movies to catch you up, right? Like you just watch these yeah. shows, and then it sets up so much, and I, I really think that's genius paul bentley man he's come a long way since the night's tale right i mean he's a great actor oh, great as the vision I'm, I'm so happy he actually thought he was getting fired i don't know if you heard the story they pulled him into the office before wandavision was a thing and he thought for sure he's gonna get fired he's like well guys um thank you I, you know it was a great run and they're like you're quitting and he's like uh, aren't you firing me and he's like no <laughs> wandavision <laughs> yeah but yeah i mean he's had a luck a lot of luck with his character like I remember when they did Age of Ultron, his agent literally just told him he was like his career was finished. And he I think he went outside. He was sitting on a bench, just kind of taking it in like, man, it's over. And then he gets a call from Joss Whedon for vision. So yeah. that just was planted on him and it saved him, saved his career. But 
Yeah, Catherine Hahn, great talent. You know, she's from Step Brothers, Bad Moms. She's just eating up the scenery in a good way. You know, her character. I love her. Yeah, she's yeah, so great. Like I have you... to say, I I love her doing dramatic. Yeah roles yep, more than she's... i do love her comedic stuff like when she was in uh what is that the the horror movie where they go to the ter- the grandparents house i can't think of what it's mm, called now I can't like either. can you get into the oven to clean it like that um i can't think of what that's called but she was really good in that yeah like, that was the first time i saw her in like a role where she wasn't just being goofy sure so i think you know, I really like her as an actress. I think she's going to have like a bigger role in this coming forward. But Yeah, especially, you know, if what you said is true, you know, I, I could definitely see that. I think there's a lot of setup. There's talk about some, um, I might pronounce it wrong, um, Mephisto. It's a, it's Marvel's own devil, their version of the devil. Yeah. So yeah it's an extra dimensional demon. And the, a lot of people think uh, Dottie might be that. That's the blonde lady she had to impress for the fundraiser. You know, she kind of oh, has right. like an evil look to her, so... You know, I think there's a lot of things happening in this. I just, yeah, I'm, I'm sure the payoff will be great. Going back to uh, Geraldine, it's been confirmed that this is this is Monica Rambeau grown up. This is the the little girl from Captain Marvel that was um, oh wow Mar- Captain Marvel's best friend. So she actually is Captain Marvel, possibly the new one, because that that is a comic book storyline. Or maybe she's coming into her own. I'm not sure, but yeah, that's the daughter grown up and. So yeah, oh, she's okay. Her getting kicked out of the realm or whatever the hell it is, the dome, <laughs> was interesting, right? Because yeah, there's another take of that scene where she grills her about like, how'd you know about my brother? Or whatever. I don't know if you caught this like in the trailer, but she said Wanda asks her like, "Who are you?" or something, and she goes, "I don't know." But they took that yeah. out. I noticed. So they just it was probably just a misdirect because they they have a history of doing that with her trailers, which is, is fine, you know, um, you don't have to predict everything, but, but yeah, this is, this is exciting. I think this is going to set up so much more for us. I do think, I know they did like a Q and a, all of them, the cast, Benjamin Cumberbatch was in that. So I wonder if he's going to appear at the end maybe, and that's how you get into his movie and so on. So yeah, yeah. I, I'm enjoying it. I think people just need to be patient. And of course, yeah, like if you don't know the characters that well, uh, I think Megan, maybe, maybe we've turned her around. She's, she now likes the show. I don't know. <laughs> well, it makes a lot more sense now. I'm right. going to have to go back and rewatch it knowing what I know now. Sure. But I was, I was interested in your original thoughts. Cause I was like, yeah, could this work just on its own? Like, okay, well, I don't know what's going on, but, and what Bill said, yeah, about the old programming in her country. Like, yeah, I think that's definitely something that's going on. That's what she was raised with. So or just going into the order of things, how she watched things or whatnot. So I do like how they're they're having fun with that. And there's there's a rumor they're going to do a full house wink or nod, which will be funny. That'd be funny if her sisters actually make an appearance. <laughs> I think she actually did an interview on that. And she was yeah. like, no, they're not going to be part of it. No, they're like totally retired. <laughs> I'm sure they were offered a yeah. lot of money to do Fuller House. But who, who knew she was going to be the Olsen that broke through, right? Made like it. she's dramatic. She's funny. Yeah, she's just I never There's like never knew her. That's she's... a huge that's a huge family too. I think they've got like three brothers too or something like that. In the business? No, like I don't think Oh, just in business, just in general. But... Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah, she I think she's the oldest, right? She's or she's older than the twins, right? She she's older than the twins. I don't think she's the oldest in the family. Right. I was going to ask that if what where she fell in that she had to she had to go through all of them their popularity and then she finally got her own. <laughs> Pretty cool. I think at like one somebody point... got the better end of the stick though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, they don't look healthy. I mean, I th- those kids. I think at one point she was going to like get into acting as a child, and then she saw what it was doing to her sisters, and she's like, "No, I'll do this after I go to college." And yeah, who knows what you know. dark shit they went through? I mean, that's what's sad about child actors. Like, pff, it's just so much. So much behind the scenes crap we never see, and yeah. yeah, it's it's terrible. But I don't know. The Harry Potter kids seem to turn out okay. Yeah, I guess <laughs> yeah. so. Well, they're wizards, so they protect themselves. It's very true. They are very authentic with their casting decisions. <laughs> <laughs> but side note, uh, Chris Evans may be returning as Captain America. What do we think about that? 
Are you ready for him to come back? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> I and I don't I don't want to say like no because I hate him as an actor or I hate him as a as Captain America, but I think like they gave him a good send off. Yeah. In Endgame, and I think they need to keep it that way. Sure, sure, I see. But definitely, like I don't want it. I don't want it to be retconned. Like ah ha ha. Just kidding. <laughs> it was like, a suit. Now, <laughs> like there's, there's now you know two yeah. Captain Americas. Like there's the young one and there's the old one that got to live his life. Yeah, right. Know. That's well. That's the theory. Is like he. The only way they could do it, I think, to make it mean something, right? The sacrifice yeah. is. Make it a period comeback. Like he, you show him coexisting. Well, not really coexisting, but he's married to Peggy and stuff, has a family, but he also still works for S.H.I.E.L.D. It would be interesting to see an aging Captain America, right? Just like going through yeah. other historical events. And maybe that would be our way into seeing more Nick Fury and the uh, Howling Commandos in a way. And then, you know, basically when Cap arrives again, he kind of just goes in seclusion a little bit you know because he doesn't want him to know my alter what what he did in the end you know because there is rumors well it's probably it's fan fiction obviously but the funeral i guess you could maybe spot him i doubt they they thought that far in advance but who knows i mean kevin feige he's pretty genius but um uh yeah i think that's the only way they could really do it right unless they cloned him or something but you still have the falcon and winter soldier show so i think doing it in the past is it makes the most sense to me anyway. Yeah. I think it'd be very interesting. Big budget, right? Because you have to make it look, you know. But you could explore more about Hydra or uh, other things that just they didn't have time to, to do or touch upon. What about the rest of you? Are you excited about Evan's return? I I will be, but I, I need to know if he's actually returning. I mean, you know, he said that's news to me, but. You know, then again, that's how they play those things. So yeah, we'll they haven't they haven't stopped backing the trucks up to his house, so he might say yes anytime. Yeah, just dumping cash. I mean, I know his one complaint was the helmet was always like cutting into his head a little bit, and so he didn't like to do that. But you know, outside of that, I I don't see why he wouldn't return. I mean, it's a cash cow. Mm. You know, I mean, look at the roles that he got before that. Did he have very many memorable roles? Johnny oh, Storm, not? Fantastic Four, uh, not another teen movie. Yeah, but I mean, they were all, I mean, they were all kind of campy. Kind of, yeah, you know? yeah. Oh, yeah. When they first cast him as Captain America, I was like, oh no, no, because I'm thinking Jackass from uh, Fantastic Four. You know, just that personality. But he really proved he he's a good actor, and he, right. he totally played it straight. And I love I love that. You know, I thought. That was when I was like relieved. I was like, "Good, he's treating us like totally different," and it, it shows and it was, pays off. Was he the one that everybody got upset about that you can't play two superheroes? Maybe I don't. Probably yeah, one probably was. Yeah. But you know, it was Marvel Studios versus like you know the other Marvel movies done outside of all that? It was basically like when Kevin Feige was attempting or he was making all these. All these 2000 films, you know, like X-Men and so on, he had part in it and he just basically learned, you know, the what was right to do, what was wrong to do. And he just adapted that for the Marvel Studios because they they regained some of the characters to make their own movies. He basically learned from those other films. Yeah, like I said, do a period piece, Captain America. I think that'd be really cool. Ditch the mask, you know, he could just wear a like a black shield suit thing and. You know, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot they can do with it, but there's a lot of possibility. So um, I think he'd come back for the right reasons, though. I don't think he would tarnish. He said before he didn't want to tarnish how they left off the character. So, you know, it must be a hell of an idea for him to want to come back. Not not to say his career's like, you know, suffering or anything. You know, he did Knives Out and he got to got to play a jackass again. That was fun. You know, I think he had a lot of fun with that part. Yeah. Sold some sweaters. A lot of people like that sweater you wore. Well, I kind of like my wheel like just as we've been talking about this my wheels have been kind of turning a little bit yeah. like when he went when he went back in time and end game and like decided to have this life with peggy mm-hmm. and everything is that does that mean that like the the original captain america is still stuck yeah. in the ice somewhere mm-hmm. yeah that's yeah i'm sure that's what it is and there's 
there's a thought that she was always married to him. He never saw her husband, I don't think. And so he probably always was there. It just was quiet, you know, for certain reasons or obvious reasons, I guess you'd say. But yeah, that's kind of an intriguing thing. Like you could maybe he makes a journey up there in his snowmobile and he's like, yeah, I'm right there, right there. And he, maybe <laughs> maybe he talks to himself he's like, oh, boy, Steve, this world's crazy. I, you know, that would be kind of a cool dynamic. Or they could just follow his journey on returning all the stones, right? He could see Red Skull yeah. again. Maybe some shit goes down. That would be kind of cool. I don't know. I mean, that's that's got to take him a long time to do. So, yeah, I, I could see that being like a a one shot thing they do on like Disney Plus or something. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it, just different things. I think it would mm -hmm. be kind of cool just to like, sure, maybe do like part of the what if story like that or something like that. Oh, I sure, know. yeah. I know they have one for Peggy Carter. She's she's Captain Britain yeah. instead of Steve. Yeah, yeah, like that's been teased since Disney Plus launched. And I think obviously the pandemic halted a lot of that stuff. It's nice we're finally well, getting WandaVision and, you know, it's a good payoff. Yeah, it's uh, it's easier to do. I mean, with the pandemic, it's easier to do live action than it is to do animation. Yeah. Because, I mean, you have to. Right, of you course. Know, you have to have everybody there animating and do the voice acting and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, just get a good record WandaVision, setup they... and you can do it. Yeah. Just get Tom Cruise to. You know, oversee all these productions. He'll get everyone in line. I, you know, I applaud him though because he's a <laughs> he is a producer. He is a multitasker. Yeah. Yes, you know he's crazy, but I think he was. I think he was right to do what he did because it's like, hey, you get this thing shut down, our industry is probably dead for who knows when. You know how long? Like yeah. I, I get it. There's a lot on the line. Those movies are huge, by the way, that he does and shit. If I have to go fly in space and then deal with this, like I'd be mad too. Like. I don't know if he's doing that in the next movie, but let's face it. He keeps pushing the damn boundaries as he gets older. Yeah. Like he's going to have a freaking heart attack. I just see it coming, but yeah. yeah. Tom Cruise, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>